Ojalá que de esta banda. All right, buddy. Welcome back to another episode of the Culture Path Experience. I am your host, Reggie Chapman. I'm joined by a very special guest. Brittany is along with me here today. She's got the Instagram account. If you go on Instagram, you go l.o.m.g underscore mom on Instagram account. You can find her. Um, Brittany, welcome to the show. And just how are you doing today? Pretty good. Thank you. How are you? Oh, fantastic. And even better that we get a chance to talk to you today. So thank you for giving us a couple of moments to just tell your story. She has cerebral palsy, so she can't move on her own. She requires a uh, maximum assist, can't move everything. Um, but I found that being outside for her brings her a lot of peace. So that's what we do. Well, how did you figure that out? What, what's, what goes through the process of figuring that out with your daughter? For her, it was easy for me to figure out because when she's inside, she screams and she bangs her head on the back of her chair and kicks and scratches and stuff like that. It's called, um, they call it self-injurious behavior in uh, behavior therapy. Um, and when she's outside, she doesn't do any of that. She's smiling. She's happy. She's a lot calmer. Um, and she looks around. You can just tell that she really enjoys observing her environment when she's outside. I feel like that's kind of the case for all of us, right? We just like getting outside and be able to kind of see the sights. Uh, were you somebody that's um, was an outdoorsy person before you figured this out, or would you had just walked with her outside and went outside with her one day and just realized that if you you really could take this to the next level if you travel with her as well? Yes, yes, I've always liked traveling and sports um, and being outside. So just it came natural with her when she was upset, or she also has epilepsy, so. I found that too, after a seizure to calm her down, getting some fresh air always helped. So it was just like, okay, well, if this is helping you on these levels, what else can it do? Gosh, I hear you. Tell me about your daughter. Uh, what, what do we need to know about her? And uh, you know, obviously you love her. So, I mean, you like to make sure you take care of her and tell me a little <laughs> about her. Go and brag on her for a second, mom. Yeah, she's, she's eight now. Um, and since you said brag on her a little bit, the doctors didn't think oh. she would live past, you know, two at the most. So it's exciting to see that she's still here. She's still kicking. She's very strong um, and just very vocal about what she likes and what she doesn't like. She's always been that way. Um, and outdoors just continues to be one of the things that brings her happiness and peace. So as much as I can do or give that to her and find ways to make it accessible for her to be able to continue to do things as she gets bigger, I'm all for it. I'm already knowing. Yeah, come on. We, 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 we're getting all into it today. I mean, just yeah. bragging on it. Like you said, I mean, so you told me she, she, the doctors thought she wouldn't make it past two. What has it been like raising her? And um, once you got past the threshold of two, you realize now the sky is kind of limited. Huh? Yeah. You know, even before that threshold came, it was just kind of like when we got the news that she was going to be severely disabled for the rest of her life and she might not make it and all these things. At first, I, I was numb. Like they asked me, did I have any questions? And I really, didn't have anything to say. It was just processing all the information for like the first, I don't know, while we were in the hospital, really. And then after getting out, it was just kind of like, okay, well, if she's not going to live that long, then let's do it. <laughs> let's do everything. Whatever she can do, I'm going to figure it out and we're going to get it done. Because if you got two years, we're going to make this the best two years ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then that just carried on and she's eight and we're still we're still trekking. So what, just, what are some of the things that she likes to do? I mean, like you said, you're to make those first two years incredible. You've gotten more years with her. But what are some of the things that yeah. she really likes and uh, um, how have you been able to kind of achieve some of those dreams for her? Yeah, we've been. She loves uh, water. So she's been we started off swimming um, and doing like warm water therapy. And then that turned into kayaking and jet skiing and wake tubing. <laughs> and then um, then we tried like the different season sports. So then we got into skiing in the winter. Um, Achieve Tahoe up, up in uh, Tahoe, California has a has a program that um, for people with disabilities where they can go skiing, whether they're um, they need assistance with a sit down ski or they have like the stand up um, skis, but they have some adaptive equipment that goes along with it that makes it a little easier. She's in a sit down ski because she can't stand at all. Um, so we did that. Um, what else has she done? Um, we've done bike riding and I like have a little buggy in the back where I pull her as I as I go. She loves that. And um, what else? 
anything that goes really fast, she loves. Oh, we've really? also done like the mountain coaster situation. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. What in, in yeah. you said in Tahoe, right? That one we did in Colorado at a place okay. called Glenwood Springs, Colorado. They have like a whole mountain amusement park, and we went there. They were extremely nice, very helpful with her disability and everything, and nothing was off limits to her. And I love that. Wow. Okay, because I mean, yeah. I'm sure for, for a lot of people on the outside looking in, I mean, they did wonder how you're able to get all this stuff done. What was it like for you trying to learn the process of still trying to do these outdoor activities while still trying to figure out how to do it alongside her? I learned that different states have different rules. So if you go other places, uh, they are a lot more lax sometimes. So they don't. They're more. They're a little bit more lax with their rules and they're a lot more helpful and accommodating. Um, California is nice um, in a lot of places, but some places aren't that accommodating. So if you go out of state, um, you don't have those those issues. So just finding, doing a lot of research um, and calling around um, and then just visiting places unannounced sometimes <laughs> also helps. They're like, whatever we can do, you know? So that's that's also nice too. Just meet, getting out there and meeting people. So well, tell me about your, a little bit about your background. Like you said, you, you've always liked sports and being outside growing up. Do you have a background in like outdoor adventure sports or where does that kind of love kind of come from for you? Um, for me, my sports were swimming, basketball, gymnastics. Um, but I just like being outside in general. Just I guess as my age group, we played outside all day long. I was never really inside. So <laughs> When my when I had my daughter, it was like, you know, a lot of the things that kids do inside, like playing video games and just sitting around, that wasn't really me. So I just would take her outside and see what she liked, and it kind of just clicked. So okay, so if you could kind of rank things, right? So mm -hmm. where you said speed is really important. I've seen videos of you guys, like you said, with the bikes, or you had her on your back. I mean, what's maybe her, the most fun you think that she has doing? And then for you, what is the most fun thing you have doing with her? Ooh. The most I have fun doing with her. Um, I think it would be hiking. Honestly, okay. we both get like this sense of peace that we don't get anywhere else. Um, excitement wise, I think skiing because she loves to go fast and then just seeing her face as she's coming down. And sometimes the instructors will get videos for me because she's she's advanced further than I can. <laughs> she can go up on the higher lifts and I'm not there yet. Really? So, um, yeah, she she advanced pretty quickly. I, on the other hand, have not. <laughs> huh. I'll fall and like, you know, try to hit the, the snow before I hit a tree or something. But yeah. she has instructors that go with her and they found that the faster they go and the more turns they make, the, the happier she is. Like she'll laugh and smile really big and start clapping her hands and like dancing in her seat. Oh, <laughs> wow. Can. So they'll take her up to like the higher lifts and I can't. <laughs> so they'll just get videos and send them to me. Or when they get down to where I am, they'll tell me like she had a great time. So I think for excitement, that's like the biggest thing for her individually. And I would mm -hmm. say for both of us, maybe wake tubing because I can I can sit. I'm right there with her. Yeah. What does that what does that look like? Are you guys both on the tube together or tell, explain wake tubing to me? Because because now because now I'm thinking is that, that's not y'all on the back of a boat or what is yeah. give me a breakdown? OK, I'm, so I'm right. Yes. Yeah. Explain wake tubing wake to me. Please. So wake tubing, we've done it in Tahoe. Um, okay. The guy that owns the boat, he has his own company. He's really, really nice and was super helpful with like telling us where to park her, her wheelchair and making sure that it didn't get damaged while we were out on the water um, and stuff like that. And he helped us get on the boat. Um, but yeah, we just, he ties the tube to the back of his uh, boat and then lets it go. And her, her signal is a thumbs up, which is something that she can do. Um, okay. So when he wants, when she wants to go faster, he'll ask her to give a thumbs up and then she'll do it. And then he just takes off. <laughs> Wow. I just hold on to her and hold on to the, uh, they have like little, what do you call it? Handles. Right. Yeah. So, 
so I guess what's what's interesting to me is like you, you so you're obviously trying you have to go and you're doing all these things as well, right? And so yes. I think what's interesting to me is that you're trying to figure out where the limit is for her. She's found her limits and that maybe even are farther than yours. I mean, do you find that as something that you have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit just to make sure that you're on the same level as her? Yes, I would yes. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> one, the biggest one is flying. I am terrified of planes and she loves to fly. flying so just what just getting on a plane at all yeah it's really bad what? <laughs> yeah and i've actually traveled more than her believe it or not but i mm. am less i'm still scared when i fly alone or when i used to but flying with her is just even more anxiety provoking but she loves it Wow. So much so that like when the plane is about to take off now, if you can imagine a child or just anyone who has cerebral palsy doesn't have much control over their body. When the plane takes off, she immediately like sits up, like her spine straightens and it's crazy. What? She'll even like brace herself for the landing. It's insane. Wow. Yeah. Huh. That is nuts. Yeah. Okay, so, 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 so she's pushing you in a big way. Yes. We're, where have you found that she's pushed you the most? Is it is it the flying or is it something that you guys have done where you're like, oh, I'm I'm afraid right now, but I'm not going to let her know it. I want to make sure that she gets as much fun in this as she possibly can. That's every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally no joke every day. Wow. Every single day she pushes okay. me. Every Give me an example today then. What, what's the, what, what happened today? Break it down for me. Um, Let's see. What happened today? Okay, she didn't go to sleep until seven o'clock this morning. And then she has a social group that she attends like on Zoom and everything. So she I, she has a talker that's like an eye gaze system. So all she has to do is look at the icons on the screen and it'll select it if her gaze is like longer than 0.5 seconds. Yeah. Um, so just helping her navigate that so that she can communicate to her peers and the instructor is just like, outstanding even off of very little sleep <laughs> she still <laughs> wants to communicate still wants to participate doesn't want to be left out um she always wants to be included so just helping her navigate through that as nervous or as tired as i am she's ready to go you're ready to rock every day mm -hmm. just rolling huh <laughs> yes oh my gosh that's amazing i mean and so so i guess if you hop on your instagram account and for the people that get a chance to follow you it's, it's very clear that you like the opportunity of showcasing your journey alongside your daughter um yes why why is that so important for you to be able to showcase that for the rest of the world um i never thought about it like that to be honest i just shared it because so many people doubted that she was doing what i would say that we were doing <laughs> So I was like, okay, here, I'm going to show you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's kind of where it came from. And then people just gradually got amazed by it. So I just kept posting. And that's kind of where it gained its momentum. Like it was, it really started from people not believing me or believing really? her. That is incredible. That yeah. is incredible. What What is the, uh, the response been like for you and Lorraine going out and doing these things? <sighs> People are amazed that she can do things. And then what 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 I take away from it the most is when people change their perspective about an individual that's either nonverbal or has any other type of disability like autism or or I'll get that, oh, my cousin has this or my sister has this or my mom adopted this kid that has this. And I never knew that, you know, just all these different conversations that I would have with random people just connecting with our experience. That was that I think that has been the biggest highlight outside of watching my daughter thrive. Do you remember the first time you got a message like that? And how did it make you feel knowing that you're making a difference in other people's lives? It was unbelievable. I, I can't remember the first one, but the fact that they keep coming in every time, it's just like, wow. You know, you don't really, I don't really realize what I'm doing because I'm doing it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like uh, my sister, I explained it to my sister in this in the best way that I could because she she was one another person, my younger sister, who was inspired by what I'm doing, and I'm just like it's inspiring to you, but it's stressful for me because I'm living <laughs> it, trying to figure it out, and everybody's looking at me like I'm doing this amazing thing, whereas for me, I'm just trying to live with my right. kid. <laughs> but um, 
when people share how their perspective changed or how it changed a situation for them or, the, or their encounter with another person that had a disability. It's like, uh, wow, this is kind of powerful. It's incredible. Um, yeah. Naturally, people are learning lessons from everything that you've got going on with Lorraine. What have you learned while raising Lorraine about yourself and um, and, 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 and during the, throughout this entire process? Ooh, I would say my biggest lesson is um, the power of believing in God and trusting, trusting Amen. his will because um, she has strengthened my prayer life like no other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then watching God's work unfold in front of me is like, I have no words. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm sure you don't get an opportunity to really just sit here and think about this too much. I mean, because you're just on the move. I mean, yeah. incredible, incredible, incredible. Do you have a background on social media? Or are you like, I mean, not only are you figuring out how to do <laughs> all of this and live your life, you're also figuring out how to share it all online. I mean, has what has that process been like for you as you've been trying to learn how this works? Well, thanks to Will, that's been helping because he does. <laughs> I just send him stuff and he just makes it all beautiful for me <laughs> because I am not a social media person. At least I don't think so. I think like Will and my sister are really good at it. <laughs> I just, you know, do what I do and just send it off to him. But his, him and his company, the This Fire Media has been a godsend for me. I knew okay. I always wanted to get it out there. And I just didn't know how and Will is my how. Look, he's, he's, he's a lot of people's how, man. He's really yeah. helpful. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, look, I noticed a second there. You, you, you're wiping what seemed like some tears from your face. What is going through your mind right now? What's got you so emotional? Just thinking about my kid, man. Like, she's amazing. And then just thinking about all the things that they said she couldn't do. And the doctors are even in disbelief. The ones that said that she wouldn't are just now I feel like we're we're a science experiment to them almost. So it's just it's just sometimes when you get to sit with it, it's like, wow. And I think right now it's just hitting me. So excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. And I think the good part about it, it's, it's tears of it's tears of joy. It seems like for you, right? It's just just yeah. happiness and, and knowing that all the that she's accomplished so far in her life and all that you've been able to do alongside with her, right? I mean, that has to really just tug at you here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Even like my dad, we were talking about it the other day because he's just like, I can't, I can't tell you enough how proud I am of you. And that means a lot to me too, just everything that he sees me do with my kid. And he's just like, if it was me, I don't know if I could do the same thing. And then, it's weird hearing that from the person that gave you everything that you have. I'm like, you taught me how to be this, <laughs> you know? Right. Hear that he didn't think that he could do it. It's like, wow. It's amazing. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. I, and look, you mentioned prayer. Uh, how much does faith <laughs> come into all of this as well? I mean, in the, throughout this entire process. And I'm floating on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm floating on it. It's literally carrying me. That's Incredible. all I can stand on, really. It's every day, huh? Just prayer, talking, talking to Big God, huh? <laughs> yeah, every day, sometimes moment to moment. Because with her seizures and everything, um, it's unpredictable. It's very unpredictable, and with that comes a lot of fear. Yeah. So, and then you have like her feeding issues, and then her mobility issues, and then she's a girl, and you don't you know, sending her off to school and sending her off to other places and her being nonverbal is like, it's very scary. As a parent, you're like, oh, you know? Right. <laughs> uh, for lack of better terms, it's it's really terrifying. But to to let, you know, Will Smith had said something and I held on. It's, a, it's like a couple little nuggets that people say throughout, you know, like your life that you hold on to. But one thing that I saw a video that Will Smith had said that like everything that you love or that that you want is on the other side of fear. You saw that? Yeah. That. <laughs> he was talking about uh, skydiving, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's true. 
uh, that stuck with me and that that with accompanied my faith. It's, it's very true. Everything that you want is on the other side of fear. So I have all these fears with her every day, but it's like, well, what if I let it go? What would happen if I wasn't so afraid? Like, what could she do if I didn't hold her back or if society didn't hold her back? Let's just see. And that's what we've been doing. And so far, she's been doing great. What, is, what gives you that push in those moments where you're afraid to see what happens? What, what, what is it just been that quote? Or I'm sure there's people around you that are encouraging you as well. What is your village like? Oh, my village is very scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, especially my parents, they are much more scared than I am because like, uh, I'll give you an example. We went to Hawaii to do, to surf. Access Surf is a program that we, that we um, did while we were out there. And I did a test run at Stinson Beach with um, with another company or agency called Me Water Foundation. So they helped us get out into the water, get used to like, excuse me, being out in the ocean um, and seeing what ad adaptation she would need to be safe just being out there, you know, because I mean, she can swim. But of course, it's always been with assistance and then being and it's always been in the pool. The most she's the biggest body of water she had been in before the ocean was Lake Tahoe. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's animals and things out there. <laughs> so it's it's a big it's a big leap. But doing it at Stinson Beach helped the fear that I had. Um, and then once we got to Hawaii and got her out there, the waves were much bigger. Um, mm -hmm. But there was a that program had a lot of good people out there. They had paramedics in the water. They had a lot of volunteers in the water. Um, I prayed, and one of the things that I prayed for was that whoever had hands on her that he would insert himself. And it just so happened that the person that she got was an ex-military. Um, he was a li a beach lifeguard, and had done this and had been volunteering for like. 10 plus years or something crazy. Like he'd been doing it for a long, long, long time. So I was really, I felt like I could trust him. And then having all the, the other supports that were already out there. But even with that, there's a video, you can hear my mom in the background, like get her out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Someone go get my baby. <laughs> and then like, no, she's fine. You know, but she's panicking the whole time. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the wave would come. Um, and it would go over their heads because to get out there as far as they could, they had to go through the oncoming waves. Mm. But Lorraine has a cue that she knew from her swimming lessons. It's one, two, three. And you, the person that's with her has to take in a deep breath. And that's her cue to close her eyes and hold her breath. She can only mm. do it. She can do it for the length of uh, six feet underwater. And that was, that's been, she's been trained that far. So I gave that instruction to her instructor that was going out there in the water with her. So when the waves came or he knew to give her that instruction so she would hold her breath and close her eyes so that they can go through the waves that were oncoming. But my mom was panicking. <laughs> like if you can imagine, she was she was sweating bullets, but she was fine. I knew she was fine because of her swim training and because of who she was with. Right. Do, do, do you find do you find yourself having to sometimes it's like, look, I'm nervous, but I can't be nervous because mom is nervous. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, do you, do you find that sometimes you're thinking like I have to I have to control the situation for everybody right now? All the time. All the time. Because <laughs> everyone is always like I find myself having this, having to suppress my fears when I'm in the middle of it because mm -hmm. everyone else around me, their fears are coming out. So right. I have to be the calm one, even though on the inside, I might be screaming as much as they are. <laughs> when I, I just from? like take I mean, the prepping steps, you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. going to prep her and prep myself as much as I can. And then I'm going to pray about the rest and send her on her way. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. When, when things get tough and you, you find that there's moments and roadblocks, like you said, all of this is, is, is trial and error. We're trying to see what she can and can't do, who can help, how you get help, the situation. I mean, um, we're, we're, what, what keeps you going? What keeps you from slowing down or thinking this might just be too much for me to deal with? I've got other things I have to get going on. What keeps you pushing? 
her face, her expressions, her happiness, her peace, her ability to do all there's there's a long list of the things that she can't do. So when we find something that she can, I hold on to it for dear life because that's to me it's what gives us both life. And so we just keep going. Wow. Do you do you find I mean look at because a lot of the series um here on the Coach Path Experience is talking to um especially black folks just that are yeah. just trying to be more outside. Um because sometimes you see that there's maybe some black people that think like going outside and, and, and going hiking or going skiing or mountain biking, like all this stuff is maybe like something that's not for us. When in reality, there's a lot of people out there that look like us that do it. Do you have a message mm -hmm. to those people that just maybe need to get off, get out of that mindset and that idea of saying it's not for them? It's like that's like saying peace is not for you. Mm. It's. Mm -hmm.